I think it's time to have a serious discussion about the lowly pumpkin. I think the pumpkin is taken for granted in the game. Now that people can make pumpkin pies, they're starting to appreciate it a little bit more. And they've always goofed around with putting on a pumpkin head, either for fun or joking around, or because an Enderman can't tell you're looking right at them if you're wearing a pumpkin, so you can sneak up on them and attack them. Because if you look at a, an Enderman directly, of course, it will get all furious and attack you. Uh, it can be a little nasty. So people haven't taken the pumpkin very seriously. And I, as a vision impaired person, am extremely grateful for the pumpkin. Pumpkins are not easy to find in the game. When you find them, if you have the time, and nothing is chasing you and trying to kill you, grab every single pumpkin you possibly can and take it back home with you. Grind it into seeds in your crafting area, then get a hoe and plant it in dirt. I plant mine in rows so that they can only flop over in one direction, so all I have to do is stand at the end of the line. An axe works fastest, if you don't mind going through axes quickly, and just chop, 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 chop the whole way down the line and collect my pumpkins. Once you've got them started, pumpkins are really, really easy to keep harvested. The plants last over and over and over again as long as creatures and yourself don't jump on the stem. You can keep them for an extended period of time as long as they're within four blocks of water. I try to keep my stems one block from water so I don't ever have to worry about it. You no longer have to till the soil that the pumpkin will land on. You just have to have dirt. I keep them in a chest alongside stacks of 64 torches, pumpkin stack in 64 also, so that I can immediately convert pumpkins into jack-o'-lanterns to take with me wherever I go that is going to need light. This is my stronghold house. It's not far from my spawn point. I started building the house because I could hear that there was a cave or something beneath me. So I dug into the mountainside. That was my first home. And I ended up making an underwater house of glass front and following the sound of the cave. And lo and behold, I saw a fountain and said, oh, what's this? And stepped off right into a ravine. It was only a one block square that landed me in the ravine from where I dug into the stronghold and the stronghold itself. So I died and I came back and I got my gravel and I went down into the ravine and I grabbed all my stuff and I hopped back up on a gravel express and I started exploring the stronghold. As I did, of course, I encountered water since most of it's underwater. I had glass blocks with me so I could glass in every time I sprang a leak. Or I would place a jack-o'-lantern because jack-o'-lanterns are waterproof. They can be placed underwater. So I used those to block up holes too. So my entire three-story underground glass-covered stronghold house is lit by jack-o'-lanterns. And the jack-o'-lanterns make it even more visible even during the day because it's underwater. It's hard to see underwater. Now this is obviously a plain old tree. It's in an area of the continent. I live on an island in a swamp and I had to go very far to get to a continent so I could find things like chickens and cows and I found pumpkins and I found a village that had potatoes and carrots. This little tree is on a part of the island where I haven't really hung out very much yet and you see how dark the surrounding area is and how easily it can spawn mobs and how easily I could run my boat aground if I'm not paying attention. Now what I've seen a lot of other players do both in videos and in playing with other people is to immediately surround the tree with torches to light the area so that hostile mobs can't spawn. This uses a lot of torches. To tell you the truth, the flickering of the torches and the little smoke trails, if you have your particles on full, I think they create a burden on small servers because all of that animation is information that the computer has to digest and output. Jack-o'-lanterns, on the other hand, don't flicker and they don't make smoke. It's just solid light. I think it's less of a burden on people's servers. I don't know, but I'm guessing. Now, when one is first spawning and only has a few hours to hustle around and get shelter and has to cut down trees to make tools and torches and so on, what I've seen is the common behavior is everybody cuts down one whole tree. I've been doing it too, from top to bottom, or from middle to top and then the bottom stump. I think that this may be a mistake if you spawn in a place where there's a lot of trees, a forest or something like that. I think the best way to do it would be to run around and at eye level chop out one block from each tree all around you. Now a few leaves will deteriorate and that means you'll get some saplings and that might mean you get some apples as well. But mostly the leaves will stay intact because the wood is mostly intact. So what I would do is run around and chop an eye level block out of as many trees as possible until I had enough 
trees to go ahead and make my tools, make some charcoal if I couldn't find any coal, and start making torches. Then I would go back to each one of the trees out of which I dug a block and I would plant a torch until such time as I found pumpkins. When I found pumpkins, I would go back to those trees and replace the torches with pumpkins because jack-o'-lanterns give light in all six directions of its face. So you would have light going in four directions all the way around that tree. Now if you decided to chop down the tree, the jack-o'-lantern will stay hovering in place. Unlike a torch, it stays where you place it. You have to put a block underneath it and it can't be glass or anything clear like ice or whatever. But once you've placed the pumpkin, you can remove everything around it and it will hover in mid-air, which is really useful to keep light up high. It's also really useful if you're in danger of water washing things out. I've heard so many people complain about having floods and their torches getting washed away. If you have pumpkins down, if you have jack-o'-lanterns down, those don't wash away in case you spring a leak and there's some sort of a little emergency flood. You don't lose your light, you don't lose your torches, you don't lose all the work you put into mining the coal and digging the wood and making the sticks and so on and so forth. Yes, initially jack-o'-lanterns are more labor intensive. You have to make the torches first and then you have to combine the torches with the jack-o'-lanterns. But once it's done and the jack-o'-lanterns in place, it doesn't ever have to be replaced. And if you need to replace it, you just bop it, remove it, and it's reusable. It doesn't fall apart, it's reusable. But the very best thing about jack-o'-lanterns is underground when you're mining, especially when you're mining in complicated caves, or if you get to an abandoned mine shaft, or if you're in a stronghold. The reason being, the pumpkin has a face. You can place it so that the pumpkin face points back to your start point so you know how to get out. If you get lost, tangled up, and confused, you go toward light, you see the pumpkin, you look for the face, and you follow the face back so you can get out without getting lost. And you know that in abandoned mines and in strongholds, it's really easy to get lost. This is my stronghold. You can see how hard I work to try to find my way back. Now, I haven't gone in it very deeply. I'm dismantling my stronghold block by block because I want to use all those great bricks and moth stone and stuff that you can't get anyplace else to build a structure on the surface. I don't know where. I have my stronghold island. I have Midway Island between the stronghold and the continent. And on the continent, I have a house both in a village and underneath the village where, there, where the abandoned mine continues. The abandoned mine goes all the way from the stronghold to Midway Island to the village and probably far beyond in both directions. I don't know, I'm just now getting started. But I was really struggling trying to let myself know which direction to go when I was in the stronghold. I did think to put up the wool blocks because they're much larger than torches. And you know in strongholds and abandoned mines, the computer places, the game places torches and you don't know whether you placed them or the game did unless you have a gimmick like Paul Soares Jr. uses where he places torches on the right hand side most of the time. But even that you can't be really sure did you place the torch or did the game place the torch. So if you have a pumpkin, a jack-o'-lantern, you absolutely know that you placed the light and you know which direction heads toward where you want to go. This is a little island and a little dot of sand on which I put torches so I wouldn't accidentally run into them with my boat. This is back when boats would crash and break and I didn't want to get killed so all the way around the perimeter of my swamp island I went around swimming without a boat and placed torches pretty far around the outside perimeter and you see that from the shore of my island you can just barely see the torch on the sandbar and the torch on the island where the tree is. For this video I went out there in a boat and I replaced the torch on the sandbar with a jack-o'-lantern and I cut out a block of wood from the tree and I replaced the torch on that island with a jack-o'-lantern. And see how much more visible it is? The first picture with the torches was taken from the boat on the way to the island. This second picture is taken from the shore, so it's even further away. And both land masses are far more visible with the jack-o'-lanterns placed. Another tricky thing about the game when you're out in the dark is things that glow. And the two worst culprits that I've come across are yellow flowers and brown mushrooms. They seem to glow from a distance and they can send you in the wrong direction because you think, you think you're approaching a torch. Like, say you went way out too far, you ran out of torches, you're trying to find your way back, you see something glowing and you start going toward it. Well, if it's a mushroom or a yellow flower, you may still be going the wrong way. And that may, well, that may make me panic and not know which direction to go. So you see how the flowers on that island are glowing? That's 
That can be dangerous. That can send you out in the wrong direction at night. After I placed the torches on that other little island and sandbar, on the way back in, I took this shot of my island. You see how completely visible everything is? The soft glowing light, the trees are all lit. Uh, the shadowy parts where mobs like to spawn are lit up. The trees are lit so I can see them from great distances by boat or on foot. This is a view from Midway Island. I built a tower with gravel, five blocks of gravel, and then I placed a jack-o'-lantern. Five blocks of gravel, then I placed a jack-o'-lantern. That hopping thing where you jump and click and put a block down under you before you fall back down. It's 64 gravels tall and I don't know how many jack-o'-lanterns. Now another good thing about jack-o'-lanterns is when I got to the very top, I had some vines with me. I placed vines on the jack-o'-lantern, all four sides, and it grew down to the ground. So if I ever need to climb up that tower and use it for a lookout, it's real easy to do because I can just shimmy up the vines. And the vines do not obstruct the light from the jack-o'-lantern. It also makes the tower far more vis visible from far greater a distance, both in day and night. I just thought I'd take a shot of me in my civilian clothes with my armor off so you could see what I look like, and that's me holding a slice of pumpkin pie. The texture pack that I'm using, I'm really glad I found it. Paul Soros Jr. was talking about another texture pack this guy makes. It's Captain Corn. He makes a texture pack that's medieval, but the reason I like this one is because the contrast is very bright. It shows underwater very clearly, even at great depths, and it's got a really good sized crosshair that's round instead of just a fine square so I can actually see where I'm pointing at things. And when you're vision impaired, that makes a big deal of difference. Also, the graphics are very simple. I can tell what's what. I can see the corners of blocks and the definitions of them easily. All the items in my inventory look like items in my inventory and the, in the inventory itself has a light brown color so it contrasts with the items and I can see them quite well. So I'm very pleased with this texture pack. But the texture pack, for the most part, is very faithful to the original Minecraft texture pack. This is just a view from the top of my house so you can see how well lit the forest is because I jack-o'-lanterned all my trees. And this is a view of the swamp from near my spawn point. As I was making these photographs, I had a little helper, a uh, sheep came to visit. I dye my sheep yellow with the yellow flowers because that makes them highly visible too. So at night coming in, if I ever were to get lost, if I didn't have a map or a compass or I was on foot or whatever, if I were to get lost and wasn't sure if I was on my way, as soon as I saw my free range, brightly colored sheep and I dye them light colors like violet, pink, and yellow so they really glow at night then I know I'm on my way home. And the colors make really good beacons and really good outbuildings so that I can see those from great distances as well. So that's pumpkins. It's one of the most ignored items in Minecraft, along with gravel, which also has some secrets to reveal, and we'll discuss that in another video. Thank you for watching. This is how a person does Minecraft with disabilities. See you soon.